bringing the change in iteratively and safely so there's room to learn and make mistakes. Dwayne. Yes. Some strong uh, opinions on this. <laughs> I, I do. Um, and, and, you know, it has its roots in Agile because the, the people that are on your team, the people that are going to be implementing all of this, they are the, your experts. They are the ones that are in there doing the, the work. They're the ones that are measuring things. They're the ones designing things. And we want to give them the safe space to do that. So we have to bring in that iterative change. And the neat thing about iterative change is, one, you don't know what you don't know until you find it out. So you might as well incorporate that into your process. The other is people view this as one gigantic J curve from beginning to end. And, you know, MBD is going to slow things down before it gets better. If you can do an iterative change process, the instead of one big J curve, you have multiple smaller J curves and it's easier to handle that and it's easier to get people on board because you're not disrupting your lives so much. You disrupt it a little bit instead of a lot. I have nothing to add to that. Other than other than I think I think the other thing that I do want to talk about a little bit is this is the safety to make mistakes. I think we see yeah. you need to you need to be making this transition on a part that it's OK to have it take a little bit longer, that it's OK to make mistakes, that it's OK to learn from. And that is really, really hard in a manufacturing environment where they've got a lot of of their um, sort of value system based on how fast it rolls out. And so give, giving people room to make mistakes. So maybe it's not a production part. Maybe it's a part that you produce before that that people are familiar with and they know what what good looks like for it. But there are all sorts of ways to build in the freedom to make mistakes and to go a little bit slower. Um, and it's really important to do that because if you add and it has to be flawless on top yeah. of trying to learn a whole new thing, it's it's really hard. Well, and that's that's one of my big, biggest pet peeves, and it happens somewhere between month three, no, month two and month six of implementation or or getting into this 3D data transformation is everybody goes, okay, well, Jennifer, just tell me everything I need to do so that we don't ever have to touch this again. Uh, so no, <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing to do to get you started so you can get something done. Because if you try to do 10 things perfectly right now, nothing will happen. Yeah, yeah what's 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 the, the phrase, you know, perfect is the enemy of good. Uh, yeah, get it good. Yeah. And and, you know, if if you do it and it's perfect, great. Um, you don't learn as much from when things go smoothly. Well, yeah, and I've never seen one of these go smoothly yet. And everybody always overdoes the expectations off out of the get-go and 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 the problem with that is is that they're just wasting a bunch of time and money so if you just pick one thing do one thing that's important whatever it is design review let's do design review 